Hello, you lovely ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mings, and today I bring you guys another Advanced Wars Egg Cup replay commentary. Today we're casting a match from round six, and round six ended up being one of the more controversial ones in this tournament. A lot of people didn't like it, but I thought it was hilarious. So, <laughs> this match features a format that is almost never played on Advanced Wars by Web, to my knowledge, and that is a semi-high funds match. Now, what is that? A normal Advanced Wars match gives you 1,000 income per property. A high funds match gives you 2,000, but a semi-high funds match gives you 1,500. So the reason why I added this style of match was because I wanted to throw a wrench in the normal build orders and see how players would adapt, especially at a high level. And in addition to that, I also unbanned every single CO in the game. That means that the tier zero gang was free pickings, basically. You could pick any CO that you wanted, including Hachi. And we did indeed see a lot of people pick Hachi for this map. However, there were two, two very good picks that I thought was very underrated as well, and those ended up being Colin and Javier, and that's exactly the kind of matchup that we'll be casting today. How often do you see Colin versus Javier in a tournament setting, ladies and gentlemen? Like, I was very excited when I saw this. I was like, I was very curious how these two CEOs would match up against each other on this particular map. Now, Colin, he needs no introduction. He is ridiculously busted. Uh, he gets a lot of money. His units are cheaper. His gold rush multiplies his funds based on how much he has available, so he can do whack things like saving up income over several turns and just pop it for a massive return. And of course, the more money he has, the more powerful power of money becomes. Normally, it is considered a little bit of a meme because you can win by just spamming gold rush, but there are definitely plays for power of money in a game like this. Being able to pop that and gain a massive firepower increase for a turn can really allow you to do a death push that can end up winning you the game. But he's up against Javier, and a lot of you may be thinking, but, but Javier, he's tier one, surely he cannot match up against Colin. Well, on this particular map, he's really good, because of course his powers multiplies the effect of Com Towers. Now normally, Javier is only allowed on maps where each player has one Com Tower. On maps where you have two Com Towers, he becomes absolutely busted, he becomes a monster. And when I saw this matchup, I was genuinely curious which one of these CEOs would come out on top. And we are, of course, playing on a modified version of the map, A Brush With Death. This is one of my favorite Global League maps. Um, it is a little bit modified to account for the semi-high funds rules. Instead of HQs, we have labs, and green starts with three infantry to blues one. Um, I'm not entirely sure on the rules, but I was informed that this was the proper way to do it for a map like this. And uh, yeah, this map is wild. I really, really like it. Uh, it features sort of like a base race on both sides, and you have these little islands right here, which usually aren't s used all that much, at least in normal Global League games, but as soon as extra income comes into play, I do believe they will be used. Each player also begins with these missiles right here, which locks down the opposing player's airports, so you can capture the airport, but there's no point in building anything out of it until, unless, like, you shoot down your opponent's missile, which you need to deploy a rocket to do that reliably. Now, Javier kind of breaks this rule a little bit, because, of course, Javier gets that uh, indirect defense. So he can actually build a, I think, a battlecopter. As soon as he captures one com tower, he can build a battlecopter, and I think it will survive a missile hit just barely. And you can repair the battlecopter on the airport next turn, and you can start harassing the enemy missile, which is a very viable strategy. Of course, if you wait until you get your tower shield, you can just pop that, and the battlecopter pretty much won't be hurt by the missile. So, uh, Javier has some openings here that Colin does not. But uh, getting the airport is well and good. There's also a lot of other things that are incredibly important. The objective of green player here is to rush the blue base here. And the objective of blue player is to rush the green base right here. So, it really comes down to who can wipe out the opposing base quickly enough and then take it over, and then if both players do it at the same time, because you will lose the base eventually, you cannot hold on to it forever. And if, you, if, if both players manage to do that, it becomes a north versus south battle, and a very interesting one at that. This map is also built with pipe runners in mind. If you build pipe runners on these bases, they can actually move across the pipe and lock down the enemy base. This is usually pretty hard to do. Uh, I've never really been able to make it work in Global League, but on high funds, mm, or semi-high funds, might actually be a play, especially with Colin, who gets such cheap pipe runners. Though keep in mind, we are up against, or Colin is up against Javier, which means that his pipe runners are not gonna be very effective. And another thing that we must keep in mind is that Javier just has two comm towers right off the bat, because he can grab, you know, Javier, he can grab this comm tower right here, 
uh, and then he can grab his second comb tower right down here. That means that Javier is at a constant 20% firepower and 20% defense. And Colin, who already has that minus 10% firepower, really doesn't like to go up against the CO with 20% increased defense. His units will hardly do damage at all, which means that he is very reliant on spamming heavy units like mega tanks, neo tanks, bombers, what have you, to try and widen the gap between the players. So Javier will have a bit of an advantage early on, I'd say, but Colin is a snowball CO, which means that the longer the, the game goes on, the more money he accrues. He starts spamming Gold Rush, he's just going to roll over his opponent. So it is going to be interesting to see how both of these CEOs play up against each other. Now, I will say before this match begins that there is a distinct rating difference between these two players. I believe Juggernaut, the Colin player, he's around 1,100, 1100 somewhere around there, whereas Daniel Moreno is rated around, I think, 200 and, 1,250. So... He is a much more skilled player than Juggernaut. There's a 200 rating difference. Now, that can be equalized by playing a good CO for sure, uh, or, you know, rating may not always factor into play when you, you go into wacky matches like this one. Like, for example, uh, a, a, a good player may just be used to playing the same openers time and time again, and some of the higher rated players don't really work well when you throw them off the game and they have to actually think on their feet. So just this is something to keep in mind. Rating isn't everything. Sometimes we can play much higher or lower compared to our actual MMR. So it's going to be interesting to see, but I will say it's going to be tough for Colin to go up against Javier, especially if Javier decides to open up Battlecopter. Uh, and start harassing this missile, because that will give him a very early air advantage. And the, the first player who get, gets air units on this map usually has a massive advantage, because air units are so strong. You can use battlecopters from this airport right here to go and harass this island and take it over. You can send battlecopters over this river. They can chill around here, where they are very effective. If you get a fighter in here, you can lock down the enemy's uh, airport. There's a lot of things you can do, really. You can build a second missile if you want and lock down the airport, too. That is certainly something you can do. So this map just has a lot of wild openers. One thing that the Colin player must also be very careful about is losing his comm tower, because normally you don't really see these islands being used a lot because a black boat is too much of an investment, but in semi-high funds, it definitely can be paid for and used to transport infantry over here to the mainland. Once that happens, uh, Juggernaut has to be very careful to not let Daniel take his uh, comm tower, because if he loses a comm tower and Javier gets three, well, that's GG. That rhymed. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I say we just get started on this match. Again, I really, really love this, ma this map. It is a lot of fun. Always so fun to see what kind of openers the players will do. So, obviously, uh, there's already, like, a few variants of openers that you can do. Mostly, okay, first of all, you, you definitely want to capture the bases. That speaks for itself. But how quickly you want to go for the airport, and particularly how quickly you want to grab these cities, uh, can be kind of important, because uh, if you plunk down an artillery here, for example, if green plunks down an artillery here, he can lock down this this uh, this base, uh, uh, sorry, this property, as well as this property immediately. And that is actually a very, very strong move, so I would be very cautious about that uh, if I was playing blue here. So, Juggernaut, he opens up, and yeah, it, it does build an infantry on this island. You do want to build a couple of infantry on this island, but you don't want to build too many, especially not if you don't plan to do something with a black boat. So, Daniel Moreno um, does not go for the comm tower first. I guess that makes sense. He wants that income. No engagements will be taken in the first few days anyways. I guess that is fine. So, Jargonon, he decides to send his infantry to the right, and again, he goes for that contested base, makes a lot of sense to me, and he also starts capturing the harbor, harbors also give income, in case you're very new, uh, I know this was a mistake I made early on when I played Advanced Wars, I, I didn't actually realize that both harbors, airport, uh, airports, and bases gave income, so you always want to capture harbors and bases whenever you're able to, so, uh, yeah, Daniel Morano just builds infantry for now, Let's see what Juggernaut decides to do. Goes for the base, starts capping, goes for the airport. Okay, interesting. Um, he might get an early game rocket out to just get the airport quickly, but until he deals with this missile right here, he is not really going to be able to do much. Um, ignores the comm tower, that's what I like to see. Oh, okay, goes for a city skip. That is that is an interesting decision. So he decides to forego the city to actually send his infantry over here to get these cities. It's not a terrible idea on this map because these cities can be very hard to take if you let the enemy set up artillery uh, next to them. So I think I've seen a lot of people do this in the past. I would say, though, for Colin, maybe it'd be best to just get that income rolling early on because the gold rush does happen pretty early and you want to make sure you maximize the gold rushes uh, as fast as possible because they are really your bread and butter when it comes to staying in this game. 
So, Daniel Moreno also goes towards this airport. He can capture it. He can build that Battlecopter as soon as he gets his first comm tower. We'll see if he decides to do that or not. It's going to be very interesting. Day 4 rolls in. Juggernaut goes for... Okay, interesting. All right, so... He goes for... He, he changes his mind? Okay, that's interesting. No, never mind. Okay, wait. What is he doing here? So... Yeah, he, he sends this infantry over to capture this property, and then he captures here. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I got that right. Okay. So I didn't mess up and said something that actually didn't occur. So he does go for the airport, wondering if he's going to get out an early game rocket. Otherwise, I mean, he has a good chain with his airport and then the city. So I guess that's fine. I maybe would have prioritized getting the city first, because again, it can be locked down with, with an artillery. But let's just see if Daniel Moreno decides to do anything about it. So uh, Juggernaut takes the comm tower and he builds a black boat very early on. This is definitely something that Colin can do. Uh, his black boats are a lot cheaper. And they're not any, they're not worse, uh, you know, like, transports do not have firepower, so Colin's transports are just better. It's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why Colin is so strong is because his transport game is actually really strong, because his transports aren't any weaker, but they cost 20% less, so they are definitely more worthwhile to invest into. So he's gonna try and take this comm tower really early on. I don't really like this. Um, I would go for this city early on for sure, because this is a city that you can only re reach with a black boat early on. But if he tries to go for the comm tower, I don't think that's the play. Uh, with his reduced firepower, he's not going to be able to take that away from, from green. So um, I would just go for this city and call it a day. But there's other things you can do with this black boat. You can ferry infantry over here and harass the base. That's very annoying to deal with, because you only like green player only has a single base in this area, and he really doesn't want to deal with a pincer attack. That can overwhelm you incredibly quickly. And goes um, goes for a mech early on. I do wonder if he plans to actually go rush the comm tower. Colin mechs, not great. Uh, I think uh, a regular recon should be able to deal with that just fine. So we'll see how this goes. It's a bit of a gambit right here, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's cool that he is trying something. If he can, against all odds, take the comm tower, then that's going to be very, very hard for Daniel Moreno to deal with. So, um, yeah, let's see if he can actually make something happen here. So, Daniel Moreno's turned, or I'm just going to call him Daniel. Daniel captures the cities around his base right now, which is nice. Uh, gets the city as well. I do like that. Goes for... Okay, does not go for the airport, but rather goes for the city. It's an interesting decision here, actually. I think as, as Javier, you definitely want to try and grab uh, the airport early on. As I said, you know, there's that trick with the Battlecopter and the Comm Tower. It doesn't get shot down by the missile. Keep in mind, this is a Colin missile too, actually. So it has 10% reduced firepower. I believe the missile baseline damage against Battlecopters is 120%. Again, I would love to get the damage calculator up in this replay viewer. Please, can we add it? I don't know if it's already added. I can't find it. But uh, I believe at base, without any comm towers, actually, Javier's Battlecopter might survive the missile hit. I'm not entirely sure. So... Um, Daniel is going a lot of artillery. Two artillery early off the off the gate. I do like this. Artillery are very strong on this map. You can use them to lock down a lot of properties. So uh, this could be very interesting. So day five rolls in. Let's see what Dragonon decides to do here. He has this black boat. Where is he going to put his units? I have a feeling he's going to unload an infantry and a mech on the shoreline here. And I don't think that's going to work for him. So we'll see. So finishes capturing the property and the comm tower. Gets the airport. Gets another city. Okay, very good. Both players are doing well on their capture game. Yeah, loads in the mech, loads in the infantry. And yes, he does indeed go straight for the comm tower. This is not really going to work, though, because Daniel has an infantry in range to deal with this. So this is going to be going to be very tough for me. And he gets the first strike, too, which leaves the mech on its own. Unless he plans to sail back here to get even more infantry, this is going to be tough. Daniel can open up a tank or a recon and send it over here really quick to shut this down. So I think I would have liked more to see Dragonon just go for this property right here and then start transferring mechs over on this side. I think that's really how you want to utilize the Black Bolt. This, you're not going to get this comb tower. Maybe you can deny it for a couple of turns, but it's not really worth it. We'll see. He goes two tanks and an infantry. It's remarkable how many units Colin can get out early on. Although I will say, as Colin, I generally am not a huge fan of the tank openers. Uh, I think saving up for a medium tank or even a neo tank is probably the play as Colin because his tanks kind of suck, but his medium and neo tanks are really strong. Uh, Col Colin's strength doesn't really lie in so much like outnumbering his opponent as it is out teching his opponent he wants to send medium and neo tanks into your base when you can't really build anything other than tanks and artillery 
Oh, interesting. Daniel doesn't even attack. He just goes, wow, what a Giga Chad move. He's like, okay, all right, take my comb tower. I don't care. <laughs> he just goes for the income. I'm plan I'm guessing he's gonna build something here. Now, I don't know if there is a way for Jar no, I don't think Jargonon can block the comb tower. So uh, Daniel goes in here, he interrupts the capture. Very nice. Sends in his artillery. Captures more cities. He goes for this city, which is nice. Looks like Jargonon will not get to lock that down. And he builds a tank. And, and yeah, there comes the recon. Yeah, and this recon should be plenty. The recon can easily interrupt the mech capture on the comm tower. Shouldn't be that hard. The infantry kind of block out both sides. He can either go into the forest or go into the plains. Um, denying the recon the forest might be the smart thing to do here. As you can see, the, the, the recon can easily reach into it due to its high movement. So day six rolls in and Dragonon finishes capturing two cities, starts capturing a third. This injured infantry, instead of shooting back, just decides to cap. I think that's fine. Can't really join cap, moves in his tank, starts capturing the city. And yeah, uses the mech to capture the comm tower and denies the recon the forest so that it has to attack from a plane. I still think this is a winning engagement for the recon though, because the call-in mech is so weak and... Uh, uh, Daniel does have one comm tower, so he does have that 10% extra defense, which is nice. Uh, and yeah, okay, he's getting ready to send even more infantry over to the comm tower. He's really all in on this right now. Um, if he manages to pull it off, that's going to be pretty nice, but I don't see any way he's going to be able to do it. I just, I, I think it's too easy for, for Daniel to deny this. So, but let's see what happens. Um, another reason why this is a tricky thing to do is because he can't really join cap infantry into his mech like he has another mech on the on the way but it's not going to arrive until next turn and then it's going to take another turn to join together so by that time daniel should be able to destroy that mech day six rolls in and uh daniel finally goes for that airport and there we go so this artillery arrives a little too late but better late than never it, it is not going to be able to lock down this city, city sadly but it might be able to lock down this now of course Jogonan can join cap together he also has this tank right here and uh, daniel doesn't really have any follow-ups he's kind of busy sending his vehicles over here so i will actually say as far as like uh Jogonan's play goes this play while it may not y y earn him a comb tower it does distract away from, from this area right here. So it might make it easier for Dragonon to push over here and grab the city before the artillery can lock them down. So, but uh, yeah, he, he continues to go for the interrupt. He can just join cap though, and I don't think there's anything Daniel can do about it. Uh, this artillery does lock down this play, this spot, so if the tank goes in to attack the infantry, then it will get a free shot off on it. So that is something that is a little bit annoying, but eh, he's calling, he can deal with it, he has money. So in comes the recon, boom, yeah, not a bad, not a bad engagement for the mech per se, but he's not getting that tower. And here comes the recon, or sorry, the rocket. Okay, so he builds that rocket to get the missile out of the way. He wants those battlecopters, that's fair. And day seven rolls in. So let's see what Jargonon decides to do here. He has the black boat ready. He has the ability to ferry more mechs on the way. And you see this, this Daniel can just spam recons and there's very little an infantry attack can do here. Mechs just not, they don't do well against recons at all, especially because the recons will nearly always get the first strike, especially in standard where you can't really hide the mechs in fog. So uh, yeah, this attack, it's not really gonna work, but maybe it will distract Daniel long enough so that Juggernaut can make some kind of attack happen here. But this is his weak side though. He can only build one unit per turn here. So I don't really know how effective this is going to be. Uh, so far, I haven't really commentated much on what's been happening in this area of the map because it's nothing has really happened yet. Daniel is just moving some artillery into play and uh, Juggernaut is also preparing somewhat of an attack with two tanks. Uh, again, um, I really think that building this rocket for Juggernaut is unnecessary because of how Javier works, but let's just see what happens, shall we? So he, Juggernaut goes for the comm tower now. And he actually decides to attack with the mech. Interesting. I'm guessing he plans to capture with the infantry. That's exactly what he does. This infantry right here is not in range to interrupt because the mountain uh, separates them. And he brings... Oh, this is a problem, though. You see, so this is another problem with this map. This recon is now blocking one of the lander spots. So, uh, Jorganan can't unload more than a single unit. And this is another reason why attacking like this is so hard. Because not only do you have to transport units, 
uh, and have them be first strike when they reach the shore, but green player can just plonk down a single unit down here to prevent the lander from unloading anything further. Even if he had extra movement to reach this tile right here, he could still only unload one unit. So I really don't see this attack working. If I was Juggernaut, i just cut my losses, grab this property, and start sending units down here. Just abandon the common tower. You're not getting it. So let's just see if he'll attempt to keep doing this. So, he is moving in here, though, moving in his tank. Gotta be careful. Um, Javier has stronger units than his than he, so any attack here better work. He does build a medium tank, though, which is nice. Definitely want to tank up faster than your opponent. That is the key to playing Colin here. Um, Daniel takes out the mech, and he's gonna get this. He's gonna get this interrupt as well. Oh, interesting. I like this. Okay, so double pur purpose with the rocket right here. Really, this is a good play. So, not only does it threaten the missile, but it also like, completely eliminates any hope that you're gonna have of getting this comm tower. So at this point, get out. This is, like, don't overcommit to this. You've already lost the battle. Cut your losses, get out of there, and use that black boat for something more productive. This is not worth it. As you can see, he's just gonna keep losing units. He, uh, uh, Daniel also takes down the city right here, and he's now locked it down, but he gotta be careful, man. He's gotta be careful. There are tanks very close to his indirects. He can protect them well enough, but this, this one slip up, and things can get very nasty. So the recon comes in to block off the tank. He still needs a couple more infantry, though, to form the wall. And did he just... Oh, no. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. The range on this is a bit wonky. Oh, I think this is the, the, the task that he can attack. Yeah, there we go. Nope. Oh, God. I think he just placed... I think he just placed this unit in range. Well, this is weird. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Am I the only one who's noticing that this range seems a bit off? I don't know about you guys, but I don't think this tank should be able to attack here yet. It is this blade. Could be a glitch. Maybe I'm missing something, but we'll see. Yeah, but out comes the tanks. So um, still don't understand why this thing is apparently in range, but I guess we're about to find out. I guess the replay viewer isn't completely without glitches. So Daniel decides to put up a defensive frontier with artillery. This is so hard for Colin to attack into. That 10% reduced firepower means that it's so hard for him to break walls, and Javier having defense on top of that makes it really tough for Colin. He needs Neo tanks and even Mega tanks to bust through things. So, uh, okay, decides to go for an attack with his tank right here. Seems a bit like an odd play. Ooh, I don't know if I like this play at all. Um, he's attacking on his weak side. This is not really something you want to do. It's called your weak side for a reason. Um, and, um, yeah, this city is probably, like... I would probably instead choose to focus on this area. But, yes, like, there's going to come two tanks out of this, these bases every single turn. This is... Things are not going to end well for uh, for Juggernaut if he keeps trying to push his luck here, and he also he exposes himself into Javier tanks backed up by indirect. So, but he's moving in with infantry. And uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, also, of course, is he can attempt a lab cap, although I don't really think that's going to work. But he does have his medium tank joining the fray now, which means that at least Daniel Morana can't attack him on a strong side, but I don't think that's what his intentions are anyway. He gets a shot off with his mech. He decides to keep committing to this attack. Uh, get out of there, man. Get out of there. Okay, wait, he leaves his black boat there? Why? Uh, that seems weird to me. Oh, wow, yeah, he does. He just leaves his black boat there. Why not send it? This seems like a very massive oversight, like... Why would you leave the black boat in rain? Like, the rocket can probably just kill it now. Okay, that's a, that seems like a big blunder. Like, this black boat needs to go back. Maybe it was a misclick, I'm not entirely sure. He does get a Neo tank though, which is the right choice. Like, maybe I, instead of a Neo tank, I think this Neo tank should be on his strong side. And instead, like, I can definitely see that Dragonon is playing on a much lower level compared to Daniel here, because you can see he has some, gen like, very basic flaws in his playstyle. Like, he has uncaptured properties on his on his weak side, and he's building Neo Tanks. Neo Tank is an attacking unit, in my opinion. It is much better for offense than defense. For defense, build a mega tank. If you need to hold out, build a mega tank, plunk it on top of your base. It's almost impossible to dislodge it. And Neo Tank belongs on the offense. So Neo Tank is a unit you should build here on the strong side to push through and take this base. Neo Tank here, I don't like this so much because it gets annihilated by artillery and rockets. So, but yeah, this uh, this attack is pretty much dead. Um, Daniel can mop up any remaining units right here. 
And yeah, he just decides to ignore this and goes first strikes on the tanks. So yeah, big misplay by Juggernaut right here. Really big misplay. And now Daniel has a Neo tank available here too. So this uh, this this weak side of Juggernaut is going to collapse if he doesn't pull his units back ASAP. And uh, meanwhile, it looks like Daniel's defense is really strong as well. This is going to be so hard for Juggernaut to attack into. He needs a Neo tank really. He needs a Neo tank to bust through here. So, um, yeah, pulls back. He's, like, you can definitely see the difference between the player's skill level. Like, Daniel is definitely playing this map correctly. He's hunkering together with artillery and infantry on his weak side. He's building new tanks on his strong side. He's preparing to smash through here while holding on here, which is how you want to approach this map. Now, I don't hate the Black Bolt play by Juggernaut. I just think this Black Bolt could have been used for way better things. But um, Juggernaut is moving away now and he's pulling his horses back which is good he has that neo tank now but the problem is daniel morana can move in with his tanks and back it up with his neo tank and have the advantage here because again his strong side just allows him to build more units but in comes the medium tank from Juggernaut. he's preparing his attack right here infantry are marching in and finally he's building some neo tanks on his strong side it's about time and the Black Boat goes back as well to pick up some infantry. That's good. Just, yeah, the problem is this rocket is now also locking down this city. So it's too late to get the city now. Unless he gets like a battleship out, which is a possibility with Colin. Like, that's definitely something he can do. But yeah, uh, Daniel is ready to take his comm tower and there's nothing Juggernaut can do to stop that now. He even places his uh, Neo tank on the lab as a bit of a, you know, he has the artillery backing it up so he doesn't really need to be wary of the enemy Neo tank here. And he even actually decides to go a little bit on the offense on his weak side, which I think he's feeling pretty good about this match already. So yeah, look at this artillery formation right here. This is pretty strong, and there's very little Juggernaut can do to bust through here. He needs Neo Tanks, and even Neo Tanks, I don't think, can bust through his infantry at this point with 20% increased defense, which he will have momentarily. So, but he's preparing his attack on his strong side, Daniel is, and he has this rocket that once it's done killing the missile, can join in on the attack, which is really scary. And, okay, what what the hell did he just do? Why did, why did he block his own airport? That must have been a misclick. Okay, why not... All right. Okay. I don't know why he did this. Did he not... Did he think the airport wasn't captured? This is really strange. Maybe it's a glitch. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> All right. But in comes the first gold rush. He goes from 30,000 up to 46,000. Uh, really, really strong power. Gives you so much money to work with. He can plunk out like two mega tanks if he wants to now. He can build a battleship here. Of course, the battleship is not that effective against Javier, but still. So, uh, oh, okay, interesting. He decides to go and try and grab the city anyway, despite the presence of the rocket. Maybe he just wants to try and keep the rocket here a little longer. Uh, okay, moves an artillery into position. He's got to be really careful, though, because a really nasty attack is coming. He is forming somewhat of a wall, which is not terrible. And, okay, just eats the artillery, I guess. Not great. But I'm guessing he feels confident he can break through this on his strong side. So let's see what happens. And finally, he gets his rocket out as well. Another Neo tank. Again, don't don't go Neo tanks on your weak side. Mega tanks, my friend. Mega tank is what you want here. One mega tank right here. This this entire attack almost becomes meaningless. Like, just plunk a mega tank down on your base. It will never die. Javier will need like rockets and a mega tank of his own to kill this mega tank on a, on a base. Even with his increased stats, the mega tank is so absurdly OP. It doesn't really care about. Colin's like tiny 10% firepower reduction. It's still going to be much stronger than anything that Daniel can throw at it at this point. So, yeah, I really disagree with the Neo tanks here. So, uh, Daniel finally takes down this missile. This airport can now produce battlecopters, which is nice. He gets a free shot off on the medium tank, which is pretty devastating for Juggernaut. Moves back his tank, captures the cities, even goes for the medium tank with his tanks. L rolls a little bit low there, I think. And yeah, just sturdies up his wall. Really, really good play here by Daniel. And uh, not really moving in yet. He realizes that Colin can still churn out an ungodly amount of units with this one base right here. And he can out-tech him very easily. So there's no sense in rushing forward and overextending. And out comes the Battlecopters. And this is a real problem for Colin. Uh, because these Battlecopters can go and harass this island. And then what he can do as Daniel can build transport copters and start capturing the properties here. And at that point, it's going to become very, very rough for a blue player right here. 
So um, these battle copters present a huge problem, and um, Juggernaut needs to get some fighters or copters out of his own to deal with them. Alternatively, what he could do, it's a little bit of a slower thing, but he could build a missile and move it over here, or here. Uh, it's very slow play, I think it spends three turns getting here, like, I don't think it can get into this forest, for example, on the first turn, or maybe it can actually, one, two, three, yeah, it can actually, wait, do, th do tires use three or four movement through forest? I think it's three, so, I think the one, two, three, yeah, I think it needs three turns, actually, to, to reach the city, which is not great, but it is possible. So, uh, did I skip a turn now? I think I did, sorry about that. No, wait, now, let me just replay this turn real quickly to make sure we didn't skip out on anything important. There we go. All right. So, Juggernaut moves this rocket into range. Not bad. Oh, just... Okay. Oh, 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 oh okay. All right. Um, this is scary, man. I mean, I, I understand taking down a couple tanks, but you need every single unit you have on your weak side, and they're about to be hit hard. Still, I mean, he did take out some units, but he also placed himself right in the range of this artillery. Um, uh, Daniel Morona can move his rocket on the city next turn to cover everything here, so this is, could be a little bit of a scary attack. I really want to see a mega tank at this point, though. Really want to see that call in mega tank. But, um, he is preparing for an attack on his weak side, or his strong side, I mean. But, uh, he still needs some more firepower to bust through this Javier wall, and Javier has his tower shield ready, so he can really put up a strong defense now. Antire comes out, he really has no choice but to build this Antire, because the Battlecopter can move over here, and if you don't stop it, it can either lock down your airport or your base, which is super scary. Uh, Juggernaut tries to... okay, <laughs> resupplies his missile, that's kind of cute, he doesn't... He doesn't even have the money to repair 1 HP, which is kind of adorable, but yeah, that's not gonna do shit. So, day 11 rolls in, and here comes the tower shield. So, how much stronger is Daniel Morano right now with two comm towers? So, tower shield doubles your comm towers, which means normally it gives you 10% extra firepower and defense with one tower, and then you get an additional 10% firepower and defense on top of that as a baseline power, which means that normally when Javier pops his normal power, he gets 30% firepower and defense, similar to day-to-day -day combi, which is pretty strong for a day. With two comm towers, he doubles that so that he gets 20% extra firepower and defense. So uh, that, I believe, puts his firepower up to 50% in total. Like, my math may be a little bit off on this, but he gets he gets 20 from his comm towers, and then he gets another 20 from doubling it, and then he gets 50, uh, or another 10 from the basic boost. So that means his, his, his units are now 50-50, which is really damn strong. Uh, combine that with terrain, and his units ain't dying. Additionally, he also gets a 20% increased defense against indirect attacks, so that puts it up to 70%. So, um, yeah, units his units are not taking damage for a turn. Let's see what he decides to do with it. Shoots with his artillery, destroys the Neo tank. Oh, dear. And, yeah, if, if Juggernaut wants to retaliate, he has to yet again move into range here, so... It's just really nasty overall. Yeah, this was a really bad attack. In comes the Battlecopter 2, and look at that. <laughs> look at that. Battlecopters are so strong on this map. Like, the entire just can't cover all of his units due to all the terrain here. He's attacking on his weak side right now. Why not? I mean, he has 50-50 units, so why not exploit that for a turn? You can always pull back next turn. That's the beauty of defense. You can overextend, and then you can pull back once the defense wears off. It's really good. Even places his artillery on the front lines, you know? Oh, never mind. He, he, he puts an infantry in front of it. Okay. Well, this is a good wall right here. Look at this. All the artillery covering each other. Yeah, this is looking pretty bad for dear little Colin over here. So, day 12 rolls in. Colin already has his gold rush. Uh, he has 24k in the bank. Will he pop his... Nor yeah, look at that. <laughs> Rocket against missile. 1 HP of damage. That's disgusting. And yet again, again, I guess he wants to just lock down the rocket here, so that's probably why what he's doing with his black boat. Uh, it's not popping his gold rush just yet. Is he going to save it, maybe? Or is he going to pop it at the end of his turn? He doesn't plan to take many engagements, so I guess it's fine. Is he going to pop it, though? Or is he going to save up income for a turn and get out a bunch of units? Uh, oh, okay. He decides not to pop it, but he spends all of his money. So... I think this is a big mistake. I think either you pop it and you build units, or you build infantry and you save up a turn of income and you pop Gold Rush next turn. I think it's either one of the two. You don't do the half measure, where it's like, no more half measures, Walter. You don't, you don't like, build units and then save the Gold Rush. Because the Gold Rush isn't going to be any more powerful next turn, so you might as well... You know, you could also save up for a full bar and pop Gold Rush twice in a row. That is something you can do. But when you're being pressured, that's not necessarily very easy to do. 
So Daniel Morana is now commencing his attack on the strong side. And yeah, this is going to be tough for Colin to deal with. It really is. He's got artillery backing him up. Even, wow, oh my goodness. What the, did he just do that to get tower shield? I think he did. Just decides to take a bad engagement to build power charge. He can definitely pop tower shield. Yeah, and he does. Okay, his units are 50-50 once again. What is Colin going to do against that? Power of money ain't going to do shit against this. And he builds a bomber too. So, yeah, this is a nasty attack right here. He's, atta he's advancing on his weak side. Because his units cannot die. So, uh, yeah, this is this is looking pretty, pretty, pretty bleak for a little Colin over here. Let's see if he can do something against it. I <laughs> can't destroy the missile. This is hilarious. Just can't get that airport. Yeah, no, this is a this time for a mega tank, buddy. It's time for a mega tank. Get that mega tank out of there right now. Like this is the only only way you're gonna live through this is by building a mega tank. Anything other than a mega okay, here comes the gold rush. He goes from ah, 17,000 to 25. That is not good. Saving that cold gold rush did not do him any favors. He does not build mega tanks, he builds neo tanks. This is not good. He needs mega tanks to survive this. Missile not doing anything against Javier. Day 13 rolls in. And he decides to send his bomber north to help deal with the base, which I get that. That's uh, pretty smart, honestly. And in comes the march of the Javier units. He's pulling all of his units into the base race right now. And he's even moving his weak side back. That is definitely the smart play to do here. Don't overextend. Just force, the, force your opponent to attack into your defended position. In comes the infantry. And the neo-tanks. He pulls back his tanks right here. And in comes the attack. And that is going to be a very, very dangerous push next turn. Dragon is up. He should have his power ready, and he does indeed. But he only has 19k in the bank, so if he pops it, it's not going to give him that much. It's going to give him something, though. 29k in the bank. That's enough for a mega tank, at least. He finally gets the missile out of the way, so that's nice. And he decides to charge into the wall. He does get that 10% boost from his power, so that's definitely the time to push. Problem is, Daniel's probably going to have his tower shield ready again next turn. It's going to make it so hard for Juggernaut to get any ground here. He's just not going to be able to do much. But he decides to move in again on his weak... Oh my god, he is going to get crushed by these units. They're going to have tower shield. Oh no, pull back. Pull back. Okay, the fighter, I do agree with it. Although, I think the mega tank is what you want right now. Um... This rocket is almost... It's out of ammo, ladies and gentlemen. That is a cost-effective rocket if I've ever seen one. And he actually pulls it back to the city right now. And yeah, this wall, it is properly defended. And once again, Tower Shield comes in. 50% extra firepower, ladies and gentlemen. 50% extra defense. No damage taken from indirect attacks. This is just looking really hard for Dragonon to, to push through here. Like, what is he really going to do? Maybe Javier is unbeatable on this map. Like, this just seems so strong. I don't know what Colin's supposed to do against this. But in comes the attack on the base. The bomber comes in too, and this is where things get go from bad to worse for Dragonon here. He is going to lose this base. And with the bomber being there, I don't think even the mega tank is really a viable solution anymore. Because the bomber will kill it eventually. Especially when it's backed up by artillery. More battlecopters, more artillery. Day 15... It's a pretty big income, a uh, pretty big uh, difference in the unit. Like, their income is very tied, but their value is not. And Colin being behind in value, that's not something you see every day. He can't really attack into this, especially not during Tower Shield. Tower Shield buying Daniel Morano so much time right here. Comes in with the fighter. This is a good move. There's no anti-air to deal with the fighter, so you can use the fighter to block, which is nice. Uh, but I do believe this base is lost at this point. He builds an infantry here. He realizes he's not going to be able to hold on to it. Uh, but Daniel Morano's turn rolls in, and yeah, here comes the bomber. Boom, that base is wiped out. Can he base lock it? Uh, not quite, I think. No, that forest does block him off. But Daniel is now starting to ferry infantry. This is how you want to use the black. Oh, never mind. He is able to do it. I'm stupid. So yeah, that base is bye-bye. Now he's going to get all the properties. And meanwhile, on the south side, it doesn't look like Juggernaut has any chance of breaking through this choke in time. And now the Battlecopters are coming in as well. And there's the Transport Copter. He can start capturing these properties as well. Yeah, Juggernaut has one... He has one strategy right now to stay in this match, and that is to bust through this wall. Let's see if he's able to do it. He does have Gold Rush. He can pop it to get that 10% Firepower buff, and he does. 34k. 
In comes the units, in comes the push. Is it enough though? No, that defense is keeping his units alive. He breaks through the wall barely on the south side. He damages the artillery a little bit, but that defense is so crucial. Oh my goodness, that 10% reduced firepower is really hurting him right now. He does build bombers eventually, two bombers. That's calling for you. You know, just build those expensive units. That's how you're going to stay in this. And he is preparing to finally use the Black Boat in the way that he should have used it all along, which is to transport infantry units over here. But Daniel has two battlecopters in the vicinity, which can harass these infantry and make it almost impossible for them to get any ground. So at this point, the top base is completely lost for blue. J Daniel is starting to move his rocket in to defend as well. This is going to be even harder for Juggernaut to push through here. And this missile still alive, taking pot shots at the bombers, draining Juggernaut's income ever so slightly, which is a big deal, because that is income that he won't be able to multiply with future gold rushes. His tower shield is pretty far away now, though, and the diminishing returns are starting to kick in, making it less likely that he'll be able to chain tower shields one after another. But he's still holding on pretty well here with this defense. Uh, still doing a good job dealing a lot of damage. Ooh, that battlecopter comes in as well. So many artillery. Infantry blocking off everywhere. This is a uh, beautiful defense right here by Daniel. He's really playing well. Builds a fighter too to counter all these bombers. Pretty well played. Even bringing in his low HP recons for support. That's what we like to see. Recons in standard. All right, day 17 rolls in. It's looking very bleak for Dragonon. He is behind on units. Oh my goodness, look at this. 28 to 50 units. Daniel has hit the unit cap. Oh my goodness. Against Colin. Yeah, I think we can pretty much conclude that this attack is not going to be effective enough. I mean, he might be able to take the base in time because he does have a unit advantage here. But Daniel is going to be able to take, come and reinforce with his other units here now. Does get a good gold rush for 43k. Builds fighters and finally the first mega tank of the game. Uh, problem is though, this fighter is just going to get shot down by the sun tires. I don't really know what he was thinking there. Honestly, I don't really think he's thinking all that much anymore. He's probably realizing that this match is lost. The tower shield comes in for the coup de gras again, making it almost impossible for Juggernaut to push through here. Yeah, Javier is a monster on this map. Even with the rating difference, I don't know if there's much Juggernaut could have done here. But I am estimating that this is going to be a resign pretty damn quickly. So we're just going to blaze through this turn right here. I don't see any way Juggernaut can win. And indeed, he does resign. So a very interesting match. I liked it a lot. It was fun to see these CEOs go up against each other. I definitely think that uh, Javier has the edge in this battle. But there's no doubt that Colin has some good plays too. And again, Dragonon made some very crucial misplays in the early game here. He misused his black boat. He attacked on his weak side. He did not build Neo tanks on his strong side. He didn't build Mega tanks on his weak side, which I think is what you have to do as Colin. And he didn't get the airport quickly enough, which gave uh, Javier uh, air superiority, which is a death sentence on this map. I would have liked to see this matchup again against two more closely skilled opponents, uh, because it was very apparent here just how much of a better player Dan was compared to Dragonon, but I still think Dragonon fought very valiantly despite being at a 200 rating disadvantage, and this was a very fun yeah, matchup to see, but I do think that you can't really beat Javier on this map <laughs> with two comp towers. He's simply too strong. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Egg Cup is still ongoing. You can't sign up for it anymore. Uh, but the final rounds are being duked out as we speak. And do remember to uh, participate in the map making contest if you haven't already. We've gotten a lot of good maps so far. And we're going to use them all in Season 2 of the Egg Cup. So I'm really looking forward to that. And yeah, hope you guys are enjoying the Egg Cup. Season 2 will begin as soon as Season 1 is concluded at the end of October. All right, my name is Inmengs. Give a like and a comment if you enjoyed this battle. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.